it is quite a relief, actually, to finally be in the company of Michel because I seem to chase him around uh, the Justice Lipsis building in Brussels at every summit, and here he is trapped on a stage with me for the next 45 minutes. Uh, so I am the happiest TV anchor in Europe. He's suddenly gone pale, but I will be kind. I promise we will be kind. Uh, so we are talking about Brexit in the context of uh, European security. I'm going to try and get to as many questions as I can over the course of the next session. So this is your time to put all those Brexit questions to our panel. God help us, we're all Brexit experts now, aren't we? And also I should remind you that you can take part if you're not in the room and you're outside the conference. Remember you can go to slido.com, this is our website. Uh, you can ask questions, put in the hashtag Globesec 2019 and we are in the Danube space, don't forget. Uh, so send your questions the more you vote for the questions, the higher they go up the list. So I'm going to kick us off. Um, I've just come from Portsmouth, Foreign Minister, and there were 16 countries there for an event which was very humbling, very moving for the D-Day commemorations. But they signed a commitment to work together to get through uh, international tensions on the world stage. And I thought it was revealing that they even felt they needed to sign such a document. Does that tell us that in the context of Brexit and in the context of Donald Trump, the institutions that we have post the Second World War are now under real pressure? Yes, they are. It is widely recognized. Michelle, we're going to talk about security, um, but the giant elephant that's sitting with us on the stage is the vacuum that currently exists in London. And as we speak, the Prime Minister is standing down. She is standing down in her capacity as the leader of the Conservative Party. Are you sorry to see her go, particularly in mind of who might follow her through the door of number 10? Yes, we are in a time of political change in UK. Do you, would you agree that Brexit does pose an existential threat to the European Union, Minister? No, uh, not now. Not for the time being. You said last, I think, probably in the spring, just before the March deadline, that you were prepared to consider an extension so long as there was a purpose. Do you think attitudes are hardening in Europe to an extension beyond October the 31st? We are already asking ourselves, what's the, what's the purpose of yet another extension? This 31st of October is already interfering with our European political calendar. Is there a point where no solution, the cost of no solution, outweighs the cost of no deal. The UK uh, still wants to live in an orderly manner. This is the point, and we are waiting for the answer. Let me get the microphones around the room. Uh, do keep your questions short and concise if you can, then we can get as many in as we can. Yes, up at the back, please. Thank you. Could I get you to respond, Minister? I mean, obviously, uh, Michel Barnier represents the European Commission. Yeah. Would, would the European Council of Leaders contemplate not having a negotiation which might lead us to no deal? Uh, let's have a question from down here. I did promise we... Yes, please. Thank you very much, Minister. Bonjour, Monsieur Barnier. Yes, please. My question builds directly on, 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 on what you just said. My name is Tania Lasic. I work as a researcher in the European Parliament. Yes. Mr. Barnier, Mr. Lanchet, thank you very much indeed. Would you show your appreciation, please, for thank you the Minister and Mr. Barnier? 